38 pounds in the black corner. From St. Louis, Missouri. Mr. Pro. Andre the Giant. Gonna get his left hand on the bruiser. Oh, oh. Number one, the greatest WWE champion of all time, and in many ways, the man who made the title what it is today, Bruno Sammartino. His opponent, weighing 236 pounds in the white corner, from Van Nuys, Welcome in to another edition of the Retro Wrestling Rewind. As always, I am David Fine. My tag team partner, the true Long Island IZ, Alex G. He'll be back on Wednesday when we cover WrestleMania 4. But today I have a very special guest, a man who I met one year ago, upcoming in April, at WrestleMania, WrestleCon, the great Mac Davis. Man, one year ago, can you believe, what were you doing at this moment? Were you anticipating your trip to New York City? And WrestleMania and WrestleCon. I really was. And it, it's great to be here. Thank you. I, I, it's uh, that particular WrestleCon, as you know, there was so much going into that. Uh, there, there was the NWA. There was their run with Cody and Nick. And uh, they, everything that was happening at that time, along with WrestleMania, just made things at a real amped level at that particular year. And, uh, of course, my mind wasn't all there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and thank God I had you there because otherwise I've been in a lot of trouble. Because yeah, 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 uh, yeah we'll definitely we'll, tell, we'll definitely tell that story coming. It's a it's it's a funny story, guys. You'll you'll find it funny. But yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking that I was talking to Bill last night because he's actually going to maybe appear on the program this weekend because I finally nailed him down. I was like, you're not really going anywhere. You're not going to. He was supposed to come to Atlanta or to Rome, Georgia, for Superstars of Wrestling, but I think that's um, most officially probably going to be canceled. Or he said he will not uh, travel to that event, even if it's happening. But I mean, I cannot believe one year ago we were going to New York, we were walking around and now New York city is closed down. No wrestling. It's just, and WrestleMania is now two days. It's a two day event. So, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's, it's just weird. I, it's one of the strangest things I, I, you know, during our lifetime, we know we've never seen uh, a WrestleMania delayed, uh, much less canceled for the most part. I mean, because all the events that went with WrestleMania, not just the event that you see on pay-per-view, but everything that leads up to that, all their shows prior to, including all the indie shows, ROH, you name them, they're all out there. And they took a heck of a risk. And then when the coronavirus came, it really was, it was devastating to a lot of people on many, many different levels. Uh, you know, you're not just talking about the wrestling talent, the indie talent. You're not talking about the, uh, just the, the promoters and what they may have into it, but you've got the, uh, the city of Tampa Bay, the money that they're going to lose in this process by WrestleMania not being there. It's just astronomical. And it, of course it, you know, rolls down to, your hotels, your restaurants, every bit of that is taking a hit from this coronavirus. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing like we've ever seen in our lifetime, I know. And, uh, and to see New York the way it is now, when you bring up the live cam at Times Square and you look out there, you're like, oh, wow, compared to what you and I saw when we were there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was def- it's one of those things that I hope we never, never see again. And the thing about WrestleMania, they're not canceling. It's two days or pre-taping it according to some sources wwe yeah. if, if they if yeah that's just terrible if if they cancel wrestlemania wwe is going to lose money but it's the independent promotions that bank on yes. wrestlemania weekend as they're like their 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 wrestlemania weekend show they may or may not be able to to survive and, and the independent wrestlers that are booked that they can't do stuff they can't do shows it's 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 a sad thing you know all you know, altogether. I mean, it's, I mean, other than the fact that people are dying and I mean, that's, that's terrible. But when you go down to wrestling, it's the weekend that people look forward to. And then the, the, this the yeah. Super Bowl. I mean, basically what people say about, uh, you know, the NFL and that the Super Bowl is a big money maker for a lot of people, including the NFL. Uh, it, it's one of those times of the year, especially for wrestling in our situation of WrestleMania. Uh, th- there's a lot of money in the month of April and without April and that income, it hurts a lot of promotions from going forward and may have to rethink, uh, their entire, you know, uh, rest of the year is, you know, how many shows can they run? How many can they afford right now? What would the draw be? Because even if we open, 
you know, people back up saying, go out, be free, go do what you want to do. Um, there's still the economic impact that's going to take a while. That's not going to be immediate. I mean, because people are losing money now. They're losing their jobs. So with all that in hand, it's not like people are just suddenly going to go right back and fill up, you know, a a, a venue again because they won't. Uh, They're going to be nervous about going. Uh, They're going to feel guilty if they take their family to see something, you know, until they know for sure. And that may be next year for all we know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's I mean, it's 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 a world of hurt for the and the thing about like independent wrestling. I mean, yep. Independent wrestling may come back, but say a, a great independent wrestler, they lose their job there, you know, as I call it, their shoot job. And they, they can't afford to, you know, to go to rest, to work, to work anymore, to do, take time off from work, to go work a show out of town. I mean, it's going to, it's going to trickle down. We have not seen it, but we were talking about the big, at the start, when we were in New York last year, we uh, went to karaoke with Bill. We had a great time, had a, a had a few, yeah. few drinks. Um, that's, that's a uh, understatement. We went to a pizza <laughs> joint. We got into a cab, and you looked down, and what? I didn't have my camera. I was missing my video camera that I had been, at that point, uh, recording every bit of the footage from WrestleCon, and I, mean, I had interviews on there that one of you know one time only type of interviews that I, I, I really I was just sick to my stomach. I mean, that it's, it's just like. I know people have that feeling like you lose your keys or something. It's just that you just, your heart goes, boom, yeah. it just drops. And, uh, that's, that's what happened, uh, that night. And, 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 and of all times too, because you got to remember a year ago, I, I was pretty much, uh, in, still am, but I mean, in, in, in the world of wrestling, I, I wasn't active. I had just started getting active again because I'd been out for a while and so being there with Bill was kind of my reintroduction into kind of getting around and being in the business again. And here it is the first time. And I, and I, uh Oh, <laughs> and, and then, and <laughs> I don't then, have yeah. what I need. And then, then I said, um, I said, Mac, here, here's an idea. I just came up, but call your whatever yeah, credit card. We go there. Okay. Let me mention that it was late. Uh, it was late at night when we we're talking now. So at this point, it's, it, everything is closing in New York, believe it or not. And a lot of the food places are closing. So I am freaking out at this point because we know that the pizza place we went to is not open anymore. Uh, it, it's and not. If, no. I might get to see if I got my bag. Won't be until the morning time. <laughs> and, but, OK, so it's not like it was a, a specialty restaurant, you know, that it's one of none, one of one. It's New York City. There's thousands of pizza joints down side streets down. I mean, it's like, I was like, I couldn't even tell you where we were staying, let alone where this pizza joint was, but I'm glad you found, you know, used your credit card, call the credit card company. They said, Hey, this is the last transaction. But you did that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it weren't for you mentioning, Hey, you used your credit card, right? Yeah. I say, well, then we can find out where we ate because like you, like you were saying, you know, it, it, we had no idea what the piece of place name was. We couldn't remember because there's just millions of them in New York. It, it, yes, so it, yeah. at, without that, I would have been in trouble. I, I mean, really it, would It's have. definitely the one time it was good that you picked up the tap. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> most of the time you're like, nah, if, yeah, I mean, I'll, if you want to pay for it, that's great. But this is the one time that would. Oh, that Bill's not going to pay for it. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, you got to love Bill. But speaking of, uh, you know, wrestling, we're talking about, you know, this is a, an old school wrestling show. What are your first thoughts, your first memories of, I'd say, NWA Mid-Atlantic growing up? I mean, did you grow up watching wrestling in your house or is it, I mean, did you have like a, a father or a mother or somebody that took you to the wrestling matches or did you just watch it on television? I was one of those kids that quietly watched wrestling in the house. When nobody was around, I'd wrestle with the pillows, jump on the sofas, you know, everything else. Um, and, but there was no one in my family, even, you know, to this day that enjoys professional wrestling, just me. Uh, but I've always known, um, you know, I was sitting here uh, not long ago and I was talking to Bill, Bill after who we were talking about earlier. And, uh, I told Bill, I said, I just can't figure out, you know, people ask me, what do I do? And I don't know how to answer that question because, you know, I've been in radio and I, I've been a promoter. I've done a lot of things. And he, he, he just quietly said, you're an entertainer. And when he said that, it slapped me in the head. And I realized, yeah, that, that is pretty much what I do now. Um, and and uh, 
I'd done that since I was a kid. I, I remember doing that on the going into grade school during lunchtime and recess, and we would act out, you know, play fights and. You know, during our time, I, I'm not exactly sure how old you are, but I'm 56 years old. And stuntmen, when I was growing up, were a big deal. Mm-hmm. You know, stuntmen, wrestlers, you had all those shows about, you know, Smoking the Bandit, the stuntmen shows, which I can't remember what that was called. But there was a, a lot of things at that time that were based around action and stunts and live action stunts. That always appealed to me. And and uh, to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever told him by this, but I've always in the back of my mind, I think I always wanted to be a stuntman. I yeah. think that's really what I wanted to do. The only problem was you don't get to act when you're a stuntman. You can only perform and do the stunt, but you don't get to be a part of the acting, too, which is a is a necessary crave of mine. I still like to perform and it's hard to let that go. Once you perform, it's hard to stop. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things. I, I started in wrestling in 1991 as a ring announcer. And it's one of those, it's, it's I consider it kind of like a drug. It's one of those things yes. when, you, when you get into it, it is sure as hell hard to quit. I mean, it's just like, I mean, I would have loved to have been back in it, but the wife is like, no, you, you can't get back in. I was just, I cannot quit professional wrestling. It's, it's one of those things that just attaches to you. And once you get into it and you love it and you're good at it and have a fun time, then it's something you cannot shake. No. And, and I've tried to, for, uh, nearly 10 years, you know, I, I, uh, at one point had damaged my neck so bad in a match that uh, I had to get out of wrestling actually performing, which was right at the peak. I mean, I was really starting to peak at this point. And so I, I was really starting to get a feel for the business even because uh, you know, when I first started, I was 38 years old. That's a lot older than most people <laughs> ever yeah. think about starting something like wrestling. Um, but when I did, um, things just started rolling really fast. And so those five years were filled with a lot of on the job training uh, that just started coming around and really starting to kind of sink in about the time I got hurt. Uh, but during that time that uh, after I got hurt, my father got sick. And uh, when he got sick, I took care of him. Uh, until he passed away. So I went through 10 years of being away from it. And I can't tell you how much I missed it while I was gone. I made a comment to my dad uh, at one time and he hated wrestling. (laughs) He didn't understand it. He was worried about my safety all the time. Uh, and, and rightfully so. I mean, he's a parent and you worry about those things, but, but he just never understood professional wrestling. As he got uh, towards his final days and, and really getting sick, he had mentioned to me, um, he, I was talking about something about wrestling, and he tapped me on the hand. And he just looked at me and just straight on looked at me and said, go back and enjoy it. Because he knew I was missing it. And uh, <clears throat> it wasn't much longer after that that he had passed away. And uh, that was something that uh, – so I made it a point of uh, coming back. Uh, that's the reason I got back into wrestling really was because, excuse me, I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, but I got back into wrestling because, um, you know, it it was a goal. I wanted to get out of that depression of taking care of my father and get back into something that I really loved and wanted to do. And even at 56, I still want to be a part of this industry. And that's the reason, you know, I'm going, you know, pedal to the metal, trying to make things happen now at my age, because, Time clicks away, but uh, the dreams don't. So you still want to reach for them as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the things I'm trying to, you know, to make things happen. You got, you got to, you got to do it. It's kind of like a D- DIY. You got to do it yourself. You know, no one's gonna, no one's gonna help you. I mean, there'll be people to help you. But speaking of that, I mean, you have a lot of projects on the table. What are the current projects um, that you're working on that uh, people would probably love to know about? Well, we got uh, several, and, and I always kind of say this is all under the actor chat umbrella because Bill has been my mentor uh, for this. You know, I had 30 years in radio broadcasting. Uh, I've had, uh, you know, one of the largest events probably in the world uh, as far as promotional events which, uh, events, which was the summer redneck games that people would get shocked if they went and looked at that stuff. <laughs> but that was a promotion I had uh, come up with and uh, executed. And we had over 10,000 people a year, stuff like that. So I had a lot of experience behind me, but I really, I was not comfortable in front of the camera. I really wasn't. I'm a behind the mic guy. I was on the radio. So being in front of a camera is still difficult to me. It's kind of weird, you know, looking at yourself or somebody else on a camera. 
but um, I've gotten used to it. And so we started developing these new shows under the after chat and uh, Bill puts them up on uh, you note know, through his after chat page and one wrestling Uh But those videos, the ones we have now, we have the after chat where he and I get together once a week and pretty much do what you and I are doing mm-hmm. right now. Uh, just kind of discussing the latest hot topics and, and other things that kind of come up just kind of, you know, free for all. And uh, we have a really good time with that. Um, I'll also host uh, Road Trip, uh, which is these shorter interview uh, type of uh, videos with just uh, various superstars, indies, and uh, major stars that we, uh, and even a lot of the past stars, yeah. a lot of the past stars, uh, Magnum TA, people like that, I, my heroes when I grew up. But uh, so I've got those shows. Then we also have 30 minute time limit, which, uh, which, which is, is a brand new show. show, which will be about you'll see about. Well, the plan was three or four a year because they're long length interviews. But unfortunately, right now, getting content in the places I was going to get that content have been canceled. So, yeah, you know, when the next 30 minute time limit comes up is as soon as I can get another interview safely so that everybody is comfortable. Uh, and then we have a new show which is promo time and promo time is going to be everyone's chance. It always says I can cut a better promo than that son of a gun. Uh, Let's see what you can do because it's going to give an open form to everybody to perform two minutes or less and send them in. Uh, You can send those in to wrestling promo time at gmail.com. Get those in because right now, in fact, just before we went on together just here i was talking with a uh, particular individual about making uh, of the grand prize which will be a title belt and it's going to be a beautiful title belt so you're going to want to be a part of this uh, uh competition it will last we hope depending upon the injuries either once a month or once a week if the injuries come in good we'll run it once a week otherwise it'll be once a month program and uh, i've already seen a few of them some of them are hilarious. Some of them are straightforward, looking down the camera, ready to kill you. So, you know, just a matter of what you want to put out there. We take them all, but we just ask you to keep the profanity to a, a minimum because, you know, we, we would like this to be something that a lot of people can watch. And and right now being locked in as we are during the quarantine that's going on, I'm not sure when this will air, but during this quarantine time, perfect time to open up the camera, have a little bit of fun, get stupid and and just let's all get together and just, you know, relax a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, I definitely love thirty minute time limit. Um, I know that the the last one that I I saw uh, was with Dave Lagreca, a uh, busted open radio. That man, I, I listen to that show as much as I can. I mean, what was it like sitting down and talking to him about the business? I mean, because he he has been in the game for for a couple of years. He's got a highly popular uh, radio show. I mean, how was it talking to him? I, you'll understand this because you're, you, you know, the type of businesses I've been in and I know what you've been in. I've interviewed a lot of wrestling people, uh, wrestlers themselves, uh, you know, whether they're managers or superstars. Um, it, they never really unnerve me too much because I've known so many of them over the years. It just doesn't bother me. Getting to interview Dave LaGreca was nerve wracking as hell. I'm not going to lie. I, because I'm looking, first of all, I'm looking at him as he's a radio professional on Sirius XM. Yeah. I'm a radio guy. And so now I know he may be judging me on my interview skills, how I'm, you know, your mind just starts taking over. You're not sure what he's thinking. And it, it, when it was all over with, it was nothing like that. It was sitting down just like you and I talking like two friends, just having a chat, talking about wrestling. So he made it really easy, but he was really interesting. His story, if you haven't seen uh, that particular episode that you're talking about of 30 minute time limit with Dave LaGreca, it's really uh, an inside look at Dave LaGreca and the show busted open. It's, it's really, and I don't, not because I was there, but because I think his content was so good and so interesting, it would hold your attention for the full 45 minutes. And the show actually, yeah, let me mention this. <laughs> the show was about 45 minutes long. The reason for that is it was the first show and there was so much. Much good stuff. I didn't want to cut it out. Yeah. I just could, I didn't see anything to cut. So you saw every bit of that uh, entire interview is sitting right there in front of you. Yeah, I mean it's one of those things you don't want to. You call it thirty minute time limit, but if it goes longer than thirty minutes, you know you don't want to cut off. You know, a guy like him or uh, you know anybody else that you uh, that you wrestle. I mean, I asked you this off uh, camera. I said, tell me the story of how you met Bill. I mean, Bill, if you have not Bill met Bill, he's very 
he, yeah, he's a, he, he's a great guy, but he is different. I mean, at least in my eyes, I mean, I mean, everybody's he, different, but he, uh, he, how would, how did you come to meet Bill? I will have to go back probably ooh, 30 years. <laughs> now, that, not that we knew each other 30 years ago. And this, this is the story I'm getting to. He came up on the print and photography side of the wrestling business, going to the shows and covering them. I worked in radio. And I made a friendship uh, with a guy way back in the, well, the main one in WCW when I really was getting a lot of inside, you know, stuff. Uh, I, I went through Chip Burnham. Uh, he's passed away now, but Chip was a super guy with uh, the super station and he kind of worked with Turner up there. And he and Dusty always made sure that we were flooded with T-shirts, hats, anything I needed to give away. If I ever needed something, they would get it for me. Dusty, actually, a a little side story, and I I know I'm hopping around, but Dusty, and uh, we went through a problem with a bill here. I think it was Bill 558 or something like that uh, many years ago, which basically would have shut down independent wrestling. Yeah, I heard about that. uh, Because of what they wanted to do as far as, you know, the license fees and the other things. And I called Dusty and said, Dusty, have you heard about this? And you got to remember, during this time, I think he may have had Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling still at that time. So mm-hmm. there's a lot. Of, it could affect him in a great deal. And when I told him what was going on, he said, uh, and, you know, Dusty does. I, I'll call you back. And he, uh, he called me back and said, here, call this number and uh, they'll handle things. And I called the number, not knowing where I was calling. And it ended up being WWE headquarters. And Linda McMahon. Huh. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's 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 like quick high, you know, business from Dusty. He just threw that uh, number and her right at me, and from that point forward, the WWE paid for the uh, anything that needed to be done to fight that. Uh, they even had their lawyer get involved in Atlanta, who I met at the uh, Capitol, and we went in there and tried to say our piece and left. And uh, I think Bill Barron's was involved. I, I think there were a lot of people coming from different angles mm-hmm. during this, um, but I remember that of Dusty and. Uh, you asked me about really my early childhood memories, you know, about the NWA and mid Atlantic. How, how can you not remember dusty Rhodes? Uh, dusty to me was one of those John Wayne wrestlers that, uh, he didn't have to look good. He didn't have to have the perfect body and the big muscles. He had everything sitting inside of his chest and his heart. And the people could feel that. And much like his son, Cody today, in a in a different kind of way, he sounds like Dusty to me. Yeah, I mean, and, and speaking of Cody, I mean, he's got AEW, which is on fire. It's dynamite, as you, as Dusty would say. It, you know, um, they're having the shows. I, in your opinion, is their their weekly shows better than the WWE shows now that have just no fans? They don't have any pyro. They just have the the jumbotron. But they're trying. You know, Matt Hardy is now, and you know, and um. In AEW, we have um, Brody Lee, you know, the former WWE superstars. I mean, do you think that's a big get for them, um, you know, getting them from uh, the WWE? I, I think it is if they come in and perform um, and, and perform like they should and not just be there because of their name. That That's the only thing that I will say of anybody who comes over from WWE. If they come over with the attitude they want to work and perform just like anyone else, not be a prima donna, come in there and be a part of a team, I, I think that uh, it's a great move. Uh, anytime they can get someone like that. Question is, how many of those are out there? I'm sure there are. I mean, sure there are a lot out there. But yeah, I mean, they have a, uh, you know, there's their show on Wednesday, and they're. Uh, it, it's just, a, I think it's a great promotion, but. Got a question of all the interviews that you've done throughout your, you know, your radio doing the wrestling stuff and the interviews, who has been your favorite and who would you say you maybe should have passed on? Who? That's a good question. Um, the, the, my favorite is pretty easy. Uh, Wolfman Jack would have been, uh, the one I, I met Wolfman by accident. Um, I was working in radio in Savannah at a station called wave 97 uh, it's been a long time ago, but uh, they had a show called Lunchtime Memories, and I was on the show and spinning the oldies. Back then, we actually had turntables still. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm doing all that, and I'm doing Wolfman Jack impersonations in between the oldies, kind of like what he used mm-hmm. to do, and I was just goofing around. I don't, I don't know if it was a particular song that kind of made me do that or what, but it just so happens that 
Wolfman Jack was passing through Savannah when he and listening to our station and heard it and called me up and uh, said, uh, you know, this is basically we're going to come in and we're going to do an interview and we're going to work together and, you know, request all these shows. So I got to actually do about i want to say 45 minutes to an hour or so with him alone uh doing uh oldies request and that's something i never thought would happen yeah. uh as far as a an interview that i wish i didn't have um i, I really i don't know that there is one I, I don't think i've ever regretted any interview because i've always tried to approach all interviews anything i do really just is just upfront blunt honest yeah. you know um, and if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, that's, that's sometimes it's on me. Sometimes it's on the, uh, the person I'm interviewing. Yeah. I mean, I think going to these conventions, that's, I mean, I wish the conventions were still up right now, you know, with everybody not being able to travel. I mean, it, it, it hurts the business. And when we were at WrestleCon, I remember, um, meeting Virgil and, uh, that was an interesting, uh, that was an interesting meet. He is, uh, I'm sure you've, uh, you've had a run in with him and you've met him. Uh, he can be difficult. And he was just, oh, looking, he, he was, he, he, that's for sure. <laughs> I, I mean, he's one of those people that I think that may not be the way he is, but I think he's living the gimmick. It's just like, I've heard MJF is living the gimmick because he is a quote unquote total asshole off the screen and on the screen. And he's living the gimmick. But Virgil, I met him. I said, Hey, you want to be on the show? And he goes, Yeah. You got David Beckham money? I'm like, no, I don't have David Beckham money to pay you to be on the show. <laughs> and he was trying to he was trying to find a table to sit at. And I and I'd run into him before at WrestleMania 30. We were in uh, New Orleans, and he was uh, sitting at the craps table um, at the casino in um, I think it was Harris in New Orleans by himself. And it's just I think he's just one of those guys that you get you he's giving the fans what they expect, and uh, I think he's just. Living the dream and living the gimmick. If, if, if he's uh, if he's working everybody, he's doing a hell of a job. Yeah, so. yeah. If he's if he's not like that and for real, and then he is um, he, he's definitely you know definitely uh, pulling the wool over uh, everybody's shoulders. But um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but the one other question I wanted uh, a couple other questions, but kind of circling back to getting into wrestling. How did you get into wrestling? I mean. I mean, training, I know we talked about that, but like the promotion that you, the first promotion you worked for, I mean, you know, how did you get into this board? I mean, I know you watched as a kid and then got into it later on, you know, later on in life. Um, how did you do I that? got into it by accident. Um, as much as I love wrestling and, and, uh, and even at that point I was going behind the scenes, I knew a lot of the guys in the back. Um, and I just made a point, I, I think back then, to just blend in. That was the thing when Bill and I met. You know, we we kind of tried to blend in so you don't get in the way. Because back then, they protected that area very, very hard. You couldn't get anywhere near the back. And uh, so they had to trust you. <clears throat> what was the question again? I'm sorry. I know you oh, asked no, something just, different no, than just that. How, uh, oh, how you got into it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I got started by accident. Uh, we were doing a promotion for the radio station I was working for at the time. Uh, there was a, a flag football game between the two police departments, police department and sheriff's department. And they wanted a halftime show, something to entertain the fans. And we said, well, we'll just have a wrestling match. I was involved in that wrestling match. And it was just really a, the ring that we set up was uh, like a wrestling mat on the ground, maybe some garbage cans, put some rope around me. You know, it was, it was nothing special, but <laughs> it got the point across. And uh, there was a promoter in the stands uh, that came and found me after the uh, show and asked me if I had ever considered wrestling. And I was like, well, yeah, but, you know, he said, well, why don't you come down and just try, you know, take a bump or two in the ring. Let me, you know, let's go from there. That's pretty much how it happened. I ended up getting in. And when I did get in, uh, and the reason I had to train while on the job was because when I first started, my very first match, which was meant just for me to get in there, just kind of learn my way around the ring, really, you know, and kind of get a feel with the fans being out there and everything. That first match, the fans went nuts and didn't have a choice. They, they were pushing me to be in a main event. I got in the main event uh, a long, long time before I should have been there uh, solely because the fans wanted me to 
to make it. They just like it's like they were watching me grow. I think you know yeah. that was part of the whole thing. They got to see it from start you know to finish when I actually uh, had a big cage event uh, against a guy named Richie uh, Wires or Platinum Playboy. And uh, that was my first big match. It was the first time and only time I can think of where all the guys in the back made it into the stands to watch the match that we were doing. So, you know, when you got the boys in the back coming out to watch your match and sitting in the stands and, you know, kind of mingling among uh, all the fans, then maybe something big is going to happen. Part of it may be they were waiting for a train wreck. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, but it, it the, the place just went crazy. It, it was a uh, it was the best feeling I've ever had of any match when that match ended at Rage in the Cage. It was just an incredible. You could feel the fans. The fans felt every bit like they won that match as much as I did, and you could feel that in the building. This it's a, an electrical charge. I can't explain. I've never felt that again. Uh, I've come close, but never like that. That was just something else. You know, I, I think that's one of those life and once in a lifetime type of moments you get. And uh, even though it may have only been, you know, three, four hundred people, whatever it was that was inside that particular center, uh, every one of them was just going crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that uh, you, you can't really explain to people. They just have to kind of um, learn it. They have to see it for themselves. I mean, they have to see independent wrestling. But one final question. If people wanted to get in touch with you on social media to, to use you for your, uh, your, your job for what, you know, or to book you on an event to maybe to MC something. Cause I know you're, you, you, you do a lot of that. Um, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, you can find me on social media at mad Mac Davis. And there's contacts all over the place. Also a good chance for you to see some of the stuff we're talking about now and some of the videos and add links to get to where you need to go to see that some of those it's all free. It's not going to cost you a nickel. Uh, but if you want to spend money, you can go to Pro Wrestling Tees and uh, find me over there as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it's, I mean, and, and and at this point in time, I mean, heck, support Max, support independent wrestlers. They need it right now. I mean, they need some extra cash that they're not going to get each and every week. But Mac Davis, oh. I, I, I'm going to tell let me, let me say this right now. I, I really, I, if somebody's going to spend their money on a t shirt, I'd rather you help a different, uh, individual right now i i'm lucky enough to be in a good situation right now where i have not been affected so if you're going to spend money and you're going i'm gonna go buy one of his shirts i would prefer that you go buy somebody else who could really use that help yeah i mean it, they, they can definitely use it help but mac davis thanks for coming on the program and uh hey we'll definitely have to do it again